Running tests for your software is important, but it's even more critical before you go to production. In this video, I want to show you how you can write unit tests for your action methods that we've created for our web API. The method that I want to start creating tests for is going to be this get recipes action method. First thing that we'll do is go ahead and add a test project to our solution. So I'll select add, new project. And with the test filter selected, I want to select the X unit test project. I'll select next. And now I'll name my project Contoso recipes.test. Now, before we move forward, I need to check the properties of this project. Since our API project is using .NET 5, I need to make sure that the target framework for our recipes test project is also .NET 5 as well. All right, let's close this. Let's rename this class to recipes controller test. Next, I'll rename this test method. This is just one of the naming conventions I like to use whenever I name my test methods. You might have your own that you like to use instead. Now, inside of the test method, I like to use this pattern called arrange act assert. Inside of my arrange section, the first thing I'll need to do is add an instance of my controller. Now, my test project doesn't actually know about my controller yet, but if I hit this little light bulb, notice that I can add a reference to my project. Now, Visual Studio is highlighting an error here, and that's because whenever I create a recipes controller, I need to give it an instance of the iRecipe data store. And if you recall, our data store actually references MongoDB. But for the sake of unit testing, I don't want to have a dependency on a database. I just want to be able to test the functionality of the controller. So I'm going to need to create a fake instance of that interface so I can write this test. And one of the ways I'll do that is by adding one of my favorite NuGet packages for testing. And that project is called Fake It Easy. I'll go ahead and install that package really quickly. And then it also looks like I have some updates here. I'll go ahead and update these packages as well. Heading back over to our test, let's go ahead and create that fake instance of the data store. And with fake it easy, it's as simple as saying a data store is equal to a dot fake. And I need an instance of I recipe data store. Now let's go ahead and include the using statement for fake it easy. And now I can pass that to my controller. Since this is a fake data store, we need to tell it what to return whenever a method is called. If we take a look inside of our controller, notice it's calling this method get random recipes. So let's see if we can fake that out. I'm going to use the call to method. And here I'll pass it a lambda. And so I'll see a call to my data store of get random recipes. But what is it going to return? Well, we know that we're going to need a count. So let's go ahead and add a count parameter. And I'm going to set that to five. And I'm going to use this count parameter inside of that get random recipes method. Now, this is an async method. So it needs to return a task of something. So I'm going to use the task dot from result. But what exactly is that result going to be? We haven't given it any data yet. So another thing that we could do is create some fake data. I'm going to use the a collection of dummy operation from fake it easy. And what this will do is create a collection of fake recipes. And now I want that to be of type I enumerable. So I'm going to use the as enumerable method. Now we can pass that fake collection of recipes to this operation. That should be it for our arrange section. Now we should be able to go ahead and invoke the action we want to act on. So now I'll say controller dot get recipes. Cause that's the action method that we wanted to test. And then we'll pass it the count. And that would simulate the query string that we get from the request. And now we know our controllers return action results. Now, since this is an async method, we're going to need to make our test async as well. Now, last thing that we need to do is actually assert the values are correct. Now, what we need to do inside of assert is grab the action result, and then we need to convert it to the correct type. If you recall from our controller, we're actually returning OK which returns a type of OK object result. So that's why I'm casting this result to a type of OK object result. And from that result, I'm going to get the recipes back. Let's go ahead and include the using for I enumerable. And now I can actually assert. So I'm going to assert equals. 
And the expected value should be the count. The number of returned recipes should be recipes.count. All right, there we go. Let's check out the test explorer. And in a second or two, you should see your test pop up here. Let's go ahead and run these with the run button. And there you go. Now we have a passing test. I always feel so much better after writing unit tests for my code because that means that I can deploy my application with that much more confidence. Why don't you give it a try and add some unit tests for the action methods inside of your web APIs?